When we have busy days, one of the things you might find yourself grumbling about most is dinner. The constant barrage of questions of what are we having? What's for dinner? When is it time to eat? I'm hungry. All those questions come at us and we're tired by the end of the day. So if you are finding yourself getting a little cranky when the day starts winding down because you just don't want to deal with deciding what is for dinner, and then also having to cook it and clean up, then this episode is for you. So we're going to go through five tips to create a meal planning routine that you can actually stick to and one that makes dinner time a whole lot easier so that you can enjoy your evenings and maybe even use them to relax. Are you ready to stop the chaos, the stress, the overwhelm that's filling your life? I'm Renee Matt, and together you and I are going to build simple routines that are going to change your life. When you put these habits into practice, you're going to be able to organize your life in a way where you can be there for your family, pay off your debt, save money, your house can stay organized, you don't have to stress about what's for dinner, and you still get time for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the Routine Advantage Podcast. My husband, Tony, and I were actually talking about, um, we were talking about healthy food habits, and I thought that what he had said applied to this episode as well, and I wanted to share it with you because I thought it was really interesting. So he had asked me just like out of the blue, and he was like, will you eat a Twix today? And I kind of looked at him funny, and I was like, uh, no. (laughs) He's like, will you eat one tomorrow? And I, again, said no, and he's like, will you eat one next week? I'm like, no. (laughs) And he said what about in the next month? Will you eat a Twix bar? And I said, well, I'd like to because I love Twix, but I said, probably not. Like I don't foresee myself eating one in the next month. And then he asked me, okay, if we had a bag of Twix bars on the table, would you eat one? And I was like, well, yeah, of course I'd probably eat several. (laughs) So in the conversation, we were talking about how it's just out of convenience that we eat what is in front of us. And it applies, I think, to this episode of what I want to talk about today is creating that meal planning routine that we can actually stick to because not only can we use this situation, I can't think of the word, this situation to our benefit when it comes to putting healthy foods in front of us, but it also helps when we actually create the meals and do the planning to have it ready to go in our fridge so that when it's time to make dinner, we have all of the items there and ready and all we have to do is go grab them and eat it. And so when you start kind of taking this whole concept and making sure that you have things accessible and easy to grab, that you will actually stick to your routine a lot better when it comes to meal planning routine. So I just thought that was really interesting. So if you're struggling with healthy eating or just sticking to a dinner routine, I thought that was just kind of a fun thing to go through. I'm like, I'm going to share that. But uh, today I do want to go through like five tips that I kind of brainstormed to pull into some condensed versions of how to create a meal planning routine that you can stick to and that it's easier to stick to and it doesn't take your entire evening trying to get dinner on the table or it doesn't stress you out trying to get dinner on the table because this is a big part of our lives. We have to eat. We have to feed our families. And if going and getting takeout or going to a restaurant or something is just more convenient because that just seems more accessible because it seems like such a big task and chore to decide what to have for dinner, possibly have to go to the grocery store and get it, bring it home, prep it, cook it, clean it up. That is your entire evening. It starts getting taken up by this task of making dinner. So we're going to take some tips to bring our meal planning routine into a much simpler and easier routine. (laughs) That's the best way to say it. So that you have a system in place where your dinner time is so much easier. So number one, if you have listened to any of the previous episodes that I have on a meal planning routine, you've heard this one. It is writing your meals 
on a wall calendar. So you're doing this ahead of time. I like to do it for a week at a time. You could do a whole month at a time. You could do a whole quarter at a time. You could do three days at a time, whatever works best for you and your family. I really like one week at a time. And you have to decide the days, whether it's, you know, Monday through Sunday, Sunday through Saturday. We actually prefer to do Tuesday through Monday because that just works best for our schedule. But you have to decide what works best for you. And when you're planning it, do it on a wall calendar because it is so easy. All you have to do is write your dinners down. You can do your breakfasts and lunches and things like that as well if that's easier for you. But I find that just writing the dinners makes it so much easier because then I can just pick a couple things for breakfasts and lunches. And we're focusing on dinner time right now. So I won't go into all of that, but just having a wall calendar where you can just quickly write what you want for dinner those days, it makes it super easy. And then all you have to do is continue using this calendar. And all of a sudden you will find that you have weeks upon weeks upon months full of meal plans because you've written it down and All you have to do is just keep writing and all of a sudden you've got this collection of meal plans that you can go back and refer to if you are kind of stuck or not feeling like you want to use your brain power to figure out what to have for dinner. And that just makes it super easy. So that is one of my biggest tips to make meal planning easier is to make sure you grab a wall calendar. Number two is to find an app or some sort of system to write down your groceries and keep it in one spot. So we prefer to use Google Notes, and it is an app with the, the, if you have a Gmail address, you have access to a Google Notes app. And what I love about it is you can add the little check boxes, you can, you know, drag and drop so you can rearrange it. But I also love that it is digital. So it is with me all the time. So if I think of anything we need, I can just grab my phone and plug it in on my grocery list and I have it with me at all times. The other thing that is really cool about using an app like this is that on the very bottom, if you create a list on the very bottom right hand corner of mine at my app, I have an iPhone, so it might look different on a different type of phone. I guess if they have a different version of the app, I would imagine it's probably similar. But at least right now, on the bottom right, there's three little dots. And you can click on that and you can click make a copy. So what is really cool about this is if you have a tendency to buy very similar items all the time or you have those staple products that you buy very often, what you could do is create your grocery list and then title it as a template. So then when it actually comes time to create your grocery list and if you're kind of in a pinch but you just need to quickly make a grocery list, you could go to your template and rather than editing that, you could go and click those little dots. You could make a copy and then use the copy and just review your list quickly. And if you don't need something, just click the checkbox and it'll drop it to the bottom and it'll get it out of your list. And then whatever you have remaining is your list of staple items. And then you can just add onto it whatever else you need that week. So that's another little like quick time hack that you can do by using the Google Notes app. And if you have the Gmail address, like I said, it is a totally free app to use. I love using this one. And in my previous episodes, you will you will have heard, I sometimes call it Google, I think I've called it Google um, Notes. Oh, wait, no, that's that's where I'm getting mixed up. So it, I call it Google Notes just because that's what's in my brain, but it's actually called Google Keep. So K-E-E-P. So it's called Google Keep, but technically if you look up Google Notes, you're going to find the same thing. So then we go to our third tip, which is to pick items that are versatile, versatile, <laughs> however you say that, so items with versatility. So when you are picking up grocery items, the really hard thing is, especially if you like like Googling different recipes or going on Pinterest or going on blogs and finding all these different fun recipes to try, the hard thing about that is that sometimes we end up with recipes that have very different ingredients. And then not only do we buy way too much food, it also 
takes a lot of time to look at those recipes and cook all those different meals throughout the week because they're not like your default meals. You can't just kind of cook them without looking at the recipe and you just cook them on autopilot. You have to like pay attention. And if you have time to do that, that's great. I love trying new recipes, but I would advise that if you are feeling stressed with dinner time, find really good default meals that your family enjoys and have those, you know, three or four nights of the week and then try just pulling in one or two nights of trying new recipes, at least until you get in the habit of it so that your meal planning and your dinner time routine feels much easier and not so stressful. And when you have the versatile versatile items that you're buying, then you can buy a lot less or you can buy more in bulk and you end up spending less money, but also you can prep items much better because if you can use one item multiple different ways in multiple different meals, it allows you to save money, have it prepped and dinner time just becomes a whole lot easier. So I think that is a big thing. And we have a tendency to buy very similar items every week, but that doesn't mean we're having the exact same items for dinner every week or the same meals every week. It just means we have items that have a lot of versatility to them and we can use them in multiple different ways. And I will share some of those with you very soon, but I just wanted to mention that that is one of the tips is to make sure that whatever you're buying, you can use multiple different ways and that will make your dinner time a lot easier too. Unless it is a special night or some special recipe that you are trying for that night. And number four is tip number four is to clean and prep whatever items you can right away and make sure you're storing them properly. So when you get home from the grocery store, I know the last thing you probably want to do is clean and prep all of the items. You probably want to just get them in the fridge and be done with it because you've just spent how much time grocery shopping, especially if you don't love grocery shopping. But when you can get them home, if for myself anyway, if I get home and I put them in the fridge without prepping them, they're probably rotting there. Like (laughs) I, it seems very daunting if I am by the end of the night, by the end of the day, I should say, if I have to go and clean and prep everything, I'm much more likely to try to convince Tony that we should just door dash or something because it's like, oh, it just seems like a lot of work. And once you get in the habit of actually doing this so that you get home and you clean everything and you store it and you get it into your fridge, it actually is much less work because then for the rest of the week, all of your vegetables are cleaned and prepped and they're easy to grab, whether you're going to steam them, roast them, you know, dice them up, whatever you're going to do with them. It takes so much time away from having to do that later. And not only does it, is it a big time saver, but it also makes them last a lot longer because if you're storing them in your fridge properly, your produce lasts way longer in your fridge. So that is a really important thing. And you can Google how to keep produce in your fridge. And there are many different, you know, articles or blogs that you can find the proper information on how to store different types of vegetables and fruits and things like that. Because some need more moisture, some need airflow, some need to be, you know, in a tight air sealed container. So you want to make sure that whatever you are storing, you're storing properly so that you can get the the most longevity on your produce. And then you will also have them ready to grab and grow and grab and grab and go. I can't talk tonight. Grab and go when you are putting things in your recipes. And then the fifth tip that I have for you is to have a short list of, you know, go to like default meals on hand that your family likes. And it really works well if these meals are made up of things that you typically have on hand, just because that makes it a whole lot easier to have these go-to meals that if things, you know, really run off the rails and you just need something quick and easy and you don't have time to get to whatever you had planned, that you know that you have a backup meal already in place, whether it's a freezer meal or a prepped meal, or maybe it is, you know, some cans of, you know, beans and some ground beef in the freezer, and you can make some, you know, quick back to chili or some tacos or something like that, where you typically have all those items on hand. That is a really good way to stick to 
home cooking and stick to a meal plan without getting, you know, your whole week thrown off is just having a few of those default meals and just go-tos that are ready to go anytime you need them. So hopefully those will help you. Um, those are my five tips, but I also wanted to share with you some of the, um, main versatile items that we have as our go-tos on our grocery list, just in case that this will help you. And I'll give you some examples of how we use some of these items too, just in case you need some ideas. Um, the biggest thing is to just get a little creative. Like I said, use items that you can use multiple different ways. And if you are in a mode where you're trying to build a meal planning routine and you, you know, write them all out on the calendar, make sure you add some fridge sweep days where you're kind of cleaning out the fridge or plan for leftovers. Because a lot of times when you are planning meals every night, you might have nights where you have too much food and you need to use up some of the stuff that's in the fridge so that you don't have it all go to waste. And if for some reason you don't end up having leftovers or um, any items left in the fridge that you can sweep out of there and use up, then that's also a good time to have those you know, default meals where if you absolutely need it, you can just grab one of those because you've already got those on hand if you need that to fill in. So that is just a couple of ideas to use as you're building this, but also don't be afraid to swap days. So if you build a meal plan and you have a whole week and all of a sudden you realize that Tuesday's meal is going to take 20 minutes and Thursday's meal is going to take 30 minutes, but on, you know, Tuesday, you have a little more time than you have Thursday, just swap those meals and don't worry about having it, you know, so perfect and sticking to the meal plan just so if you have those meals and you can just swap the nights, that is totally fine and it will work and you are still sticking to a meal planning routine. You're just getting a little creative and making some adjustments and that is okay. So I don't want you to be afraid to do that when you need to. The main thing is just to get a routine in place so that you don't feel the stress of dinner time and you want to end your night on a good note, not being stressed and exhausted, just trying to get dinner on the table. So a couple of things that we go through with our grocery list, like I said, I, these are in our Google Keep app <laughs> now that I have the name of it right. Um, but for proteins, we tend to do a lot of chicken. We also are hunters, so we have a lot of venison as well. We like to do ground venison um, in place of ground beef. So that is something that we pretty much always have in our freezer is ground venison and chicken, like chicken breasts. So that is something that we use in a lot of our meals. And there are many different ways, like for example, for the chicken, um, that's probably more common than venison with listeners. But if we are doing chicken, we can do it a grilled chicken with like roasted vegetables, or we could do grilled chicken on a salad. We can do different types of chicken sandwiches, whether they're, you know, full chicken breast sandwiches, uh, chicken salad sandwiches. We can do different soups or like a white chicken chili. We can do sheet pan meals. We can do uh, chicken pastas, all these different things that you can just do with chicken. So it is a very versatile meat. And that is something that we do very often with protein. For vegetables, our big main go-to vegetables that I pretty much buy every week to every other week, depending on how quickly we go through them, but they usually will last a full two weeks at least the way that we store them. Um, but the our like go-to vegetables are usually carrots, celery, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumbers, and then lettuce. We usually do like a romaine and mixed greens. And those are our our main go-to vegetables that we have in the house. Now, what we like to do is to make sure that as soon as we get home from the grocery store, we're cleaning and chopping them all right away so that they are ready and on hand. And what we like to do with these is these are, again, very versatile, versatile. I don't know why I have such an issue with that word, um, but they have a lot of flexibility in how you use these specific vegetables. So they're easy to have just 
as go-to snacks. Um, they're also really good to have them roasted or most of them are good roasted. I don't know that I do roasted celery, <laughs> but they're good roasted. You can put them on salads. You can put them in soups. You There's a lot of flexibility in how you can use these different items. So it makes it really easy. If I'm going to do a sheet pan meal with chicken, I can put the chicken breast or I can cook the chicken breast. Either we can put it on the grill or we can put it on a sheet pan or we can do all of our vegetables on another sheet pan and just put them all on there. And all I have to do is literally just take them out of the fridge and grab a handful of them or just like dump them out onto the sheet pan because they're already cleaned and chopped and prepped and ready to go. That meal takes like two minutes to prep and then get it in the oven and let it cook the rest of the way and you're done. And that is so easy. And because it's not usually on parchment paper, it is a super quick cleanup too. So that's just some really easy ways and easy vegetables to keep on hand for a lot of different things. And then as far as like fruits, we like to do a lot of like berries. We'll do like blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, or we'll do like apples or bananas or like cara cara oranges. If you have ever had cara cara oranges versus just like normal oranges, oh, they're so good. If you have not tried them yet, they are worth it. If you see cara cara oranges, like C A R A C A R A, if you see them, grab them if you have not tried them yet. They're so delicious. Um, but we use like to use those for just like sweet cravings for snacks. Um, we like to use, you know, the berries and the bananas and everything for smoothies. We just do yogurt parfaits. There's a lot of various ways that you can use these different types of fruits that make it just super easy. So those are some of our like go-to items on our grocery list. Um, so hopefully that will help you. And I can just recap really quickly those five tips to help you create a meal planning routine that you can actually stick to. Um, number one is to make sure you write your meals on a wall calendar. Number two, find a way or a place that you can put your grocery list that works well for you. Um, we use Google Keep and it is super easy to use and I love that app. Number three, pick grocery items that have a lot of versatility to them. Number four, make sure you're cleaning and prepping what you bring home right away and make sure you're storing them properly to get the longevity in your produce, especially. Number five, have a short list of those go-to default meals that your family actually likes with ingredients you generally have on hand. And hopefully these tips will help you to enjoy your evenings a little more and make dinner time a little less stressful and help you kind of get a handle on that dinner time routine. And if you need to, ideas to go back on other routines, you can go back into the episodes. This is our 70th episode, which seems absolutely bonkers. But if any of the episodes you've listened to have helped you, I would love for you to please leave a review, especially if you are on Apple Podcasts, you can actually write a review so we can see the words and not just the five stars, although the five stars is fabulous and very much appreciated. I would love to actually hear the words or see the words where I can see what it is you like about the show, which um, topics you're enjoying, which episodes you're enjoying. Or if you want to do an audio and you're more of a voice spoken person, you can go to speakpipe.com slash the routine advantage podcast, and you can actually leave me a voice recording and you can leave a testimonial, you can leave a review, or you can even ask a question that I can potentially even answer right on the show. So that is a really cool way of doing it, but thank you for being here for 70 episodes and I will see you on the next one. Did you love that episode or learn something useful? If so, would you do me a huge favor? My goal is to grow this podcast and help as many women as I can break free from the overwhelm so they can truly enjoy their life. The best way for me to do this is for you to leave a five-star written review on your podcast app and to share this episode with a friend or in your Instagram stories. I appreciate you being here. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next episode. Take care.